Somebody stop me. You guys aren't going to believe what I just did because it's too crazy. <laughs> so what did I do that's just so crazy? Well, I decided to go ahead and build the fastest PC you can possibly build right now, including it all into a custom loop and overclocking absolutely everything. Now, real quick, why did I decide to do this? Well, honestly, guys, it's always been a dream of mine to try and build the fastest PC possible. And well, it's always been out of reach before because the expense of doing something like this is just so astronomically high but now that this is kind of like my business and I can write everything off as a business expense I can almost justify building a PC like this so of course I did. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video because it was a huge expense and a ton of work to produce this thing. And with that in mind, any likes, comments, and shares are really, really, really. But enough about that. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the parts I used to create this machine, how much each part costs in case you want to build it yourself. Then we'll take a look at the overclocking that I did and finally the benchmarks. And let's start off with the CPU because this is the newest piece of the build, the Intel Core i9 12900K, which was sent to me by Intel, by the way, to help create this video but honestly I would have bought it myself regardless because it's currently the fastest gaming CPU available and it also has a decent amount of overclocking headroom which can boost those single core and multi-core scores even higher and speaking of multi-core the 12900k will also make for a great editing CPU for me because it features a total of 16 cores 8 performance and 8 efficient ones allowing it to pretty much go toe-to-toe -to -toe with something like the 5950x but thanks to the increased single threaded performance it's going to be a better option for me. Now in terms of price, the 12900K can regularly be found online for around 600 US dollars, which is pricey, but you are again getting those 16 cores. But now let's go ahead and move on to the GPU, and here I decided to choose the Asus RTX 3090 Strix OC. Now I decided to use this card because, well, it's the fastest card on the market, and on top of that it needed to be Nvidia because I needed to use it for GPU acceleration in Adobe Premiere. Now in terms of cost, this thing can only be bought basically on eBay right now for around $3,300, which is just absolutely ludicrous. But yeah, if you want to buy it right now and you're not willing to trade up or wait, you're just going to have to bite the bullet. But now let's go ahead and talk about the RAM. And here I decided to use some G-Skill 6000 megahertz CL36 RAM, which I just got at the last second for this build. And why did I decide to use this? Well, it's some of the fastest RAM you can possibly buy right now. And it's 32 gigabytes, which I am going to need uh, more than 16 gigabytes since I'm going to be doing stuff with the Adobe software suite. But we'll talk about the RAM a little bit more later in the video when we get into the overclocking. Now in terms of price, you can really only find this kit of RAM over on eBay for around $800 plus dollars. So yeah, it's very, very expensive and very hard to find. But now let's go ahead and move on to the motherboard. And here I'm going to be using the Asus Strix-F Wi-Fi. And the reason why I decided to go with this one is because it has PCIe 5, DDR5. And on top of that, I just have really good luck overclocking with Asus boards at least recently now in terms of the price this thing does come in at around $400 so it's a little bit pricey but when you compare that to the DDR5 and the GPU hey it's starting to look not too bad but now let's go ahead and move on to the storage and here I decided to choose a Corsair MP600 XT 2 terabyte as well as a Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte I decided to choose these because well I decided hey I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to all M.2 storage and in terms of price between the two of these it actually comes in at a total cost of $530 so that's definitely a lot of spend just on storage. And now moving on to the power supply here, I chose a Corsair HX 1200 Platinum because I need a lot of power, obviously, and this is going to come in at a price of around $300 if you want to buy it right now. Next, we have the case, and here I chose the Corsair 1000D, and why? Well, I needed a lot of room to pull in two 480 millimeter radiators in the front, and this comes in at a price of around $600. So that is definitely a very pricey case. And now for the cooling, I decided to do a custom loop with Corsair Hydro X uh, simply because I think they're really, really easy to work with. Now, why did I decide to go with custom cooling? Well, we're building the fastest PC possible, so you're definitely going to want to cool it very well, and you have something like 480 watts that you can draw on the RTX 3090 Strix, so yeah, water cooling is basically a must. Now, in terms of cost, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it comes in at around $600, so yeah, the cooling is also very, very expensive, but hey, what do you expect if you're trying to build the fastest PC? And then finally, for audio, I actually did decide to go with an EVGA new audio. Uh, this thing, I, I think it comes in at around $100 on sale at times. The, the reason why I decided to choose this one, though, by the way, is because, well, I'm actually using some Hi-Fi Man Sundara headphones, and, and those headphones do 
require a little bit more power to drive and it was just a little bit too much for my motherboard so I went ahead and slapped that in. And so if we add all this up it actually comes to a total cost of $7,335 which is just absolutely ridiculous. But what does $7,000 buy you? Well we'll talk about that in just a minute but first let's get into the overclocking and here I actually was able to get some pretty decent results. Let's just go over the graphics card real quick first then we'll get into the CPU which I think is a little more interesting. So with the GPU I was able to lock in 4k games around 2055 megahertz uh, if you play at 1440p you'll get a little bit higher clock speeds but 4k is very demanding and then on the uh, memory i was able to get uh, an extra 2 gigahertz on that so we're running 21.5 gigabits per second on the memory so that's actually pretty good when it comes to the graphics but now moving on to the cpu here i was able to lock 5.1 gigahertz across the eight performance cores 4.1 across the e cores and i was able to get the uncore up to 4.4 and then finally i also overclocked the ram now this comes stock at 6000 megahertz cl36 however i was able to push this up to 6200 megahertz cl36 but i also was able to tighten all the sub timings actually very significantly on this kit of ram in fact some of those timings i was able to cut actually in half which is absolutely incredible so yeah it's definitely going to be running a lot faster than a stock 6000 megahertz kit of ram and that's definitely going to help a lot when we get into those cpu benchmarks and first going over the more cpu intensive synthetic benchmarks and first we're going to talk about fire strike where here i got a score of 44,431. and by the way that actually does put me in 40th place worldwide for my same components of course there's always going to be people using liquid nitrogen and whatnot but for an everyday overclock that's not too bad now moving on to cinebench and for my multi-core score i got 29,372, which i thought was really good considering it's close to some 32 core processors and then for the single threaded performance i got 2006 and i can get a little bit higher by doing some tricks in the bios but honestly it really doesn't make too much of a difference and then moving on to time spy extreme i got a score of 11,285, which just for perspective that puts me in 37th place worldwide for my same setup so again i think that i scored pretty well there and then moving on to the games here we have apex legends at 4k ultra with no anti-aliasing and for the average got 172 fps and then for the minimum i got 105 fps so definitely very playable at high refresh rates then moving on to Baldur's Gate 3 4k ultra here I got an average of 83 frames per second in a minimum of 62 frames per second so once again this is going to feel very smooth for this type of game and then finally we have Halo Infinite at 4k ultra and here I got an average of 70 FPS and a minimum of 51 FPS so there you go that's what over seven thousand dollars can buy you in terms of performance when you're trying to build the absolute fastest gaming and workstation PC and it is definitely hands down the fastest PC I have ever used it's definitely like just super super awesome the CPU itself cranks through everything I need in terms of graphics it's just like way more than what I need playing on in 4k OLED it's just like maxed out at 120 FPS at all times in basically every single game I play and so it's just a fantastic experience and again if you want to build it yourself go ahead but yeah it's gonna be really pricey